Hi everybody, Lydia Crowder here, and today on the Build Show Network, we're gonna talk all about hand taping, what tape to use, and we're gonna run through specifics, and I'm just gonna kinda guide you through hand taping. So let's go ahead and get started. So we've got everything pre-filled, we've done all of our prep work so that the stage is set so that we can get in here and start taping. So the paper tape comes in 250 and 500 foot rolls. This is a 250 foot roll. We like to use these, they're just a little bit easier to handle on the automatic taping tools, not so heavy, but it really doesn't matter. So the tape has a crease side. This crease side you wanna get against the wall and being so, it's higher than the other side and it's made crease to actually fold in for angles and then fit into the, the bevel and fit into the sheetrock very nicely. So when we're working with this, we wanna go ahead and just get rid of all of the stuff that has the sticker on it. We're just gonna cut it like that. And when we cut, we're gonna use our blade. We're gonna hold tight and we're gonna pull the roll away. And then that's how we get a pretty nice straight cut. Uh, if you're hand taping a lot, it might be really smart to invest in a tape wheel. Those kind of just go on your hip and you can roll your tape out. I don't hand tape, uh, it's very rare. If I do, it's just for catch up, small stuff. So for me, it doesn't make any sense. I'm using a six inch knife and then I'm also using taping mud. That's really important because taping mud needs to go with paper tape. Uh, remember glue and then paper and then glue. So it's really important that we have this gluey mud here. We don't wanna be wetting this. If we wet it, it just turns into mush. So it's gonna be absorbing the moisture from the mud. If you are having a hard time getting your, your mud to spread out underneath your tape, or you're having a hard time getting your tape to lie down, thin down your mud, don't wet your tape. To show you my mud consistency, we are using taping mud, remember, paper, glue, paper. Pretty slippery, pretty thin. I'm not using crazy thick mud here. I don't need to be, because it's not gonna help me get that mud to spread underneath the tape. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tape a flat and we're going to tape an angle. So let's start with the flat first. So when we tape, we do butts, flats, angles. I don't have a butt here, so I don't have a butt to show you, but the reason we do that is the tape is always enveloping. So if we have a butt, that flat edge is gonna go over and then our angle tape will then cover our cut flat later. So we just like to make sure everything's all covered. We don't have any rough, raw edges staying there. So I have my taping mud. I'm gonna go ahead and apply it right here. So what we're taping when we're taping, we're taping this seam. So we wanna make sure that we're gonna have tape, glue, and then it's gonna to go to the sheetrock. I'm gonna take this end, and it's gonna go flat up into the angle. And what I wanna do when I'm doing this is I wanna have, so see where my crease is right there, or where my joint is? I want to line that crease up with the joint. So again, we have our joint there. So when I get to here, I'm going to go ahead and cut it. There's going to be trim there, so I'm not super worried about how close. But as you can see there, we're lined up. We're there. That's centered. And our tape is, is set where we need to have it set. So now I'm going to come and I'm going to wipe my tape. I'm actually going to put a little bit more mud there. If I don't, we'll have blisters. So if you're having issues with your tape blistering, coming off the wall, peeling, it's probably because you don't have enough mud. You can't go wrong with too much mud behind your tape. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm gonna wipe this way. And the reason I'm starting in the middle is I don't want my tape to move. I don't want it to slide this way and I don't want it to slide that way. And if I have any wrinkles, it's a lot easier to work a wrinkle out towards an end than it is to work it all the way down a full line of tape. And then I'm gonna push hard. And I'm gonna get all the excess mud out of there. And then I'm gonna check that tape should be in that bevel. So remember, we have a bevel there in the flat and we want our tape to be set behind there because the whole point in the bevel is to hide the tape that we just put on there. So if your tape is proud of that bevel, you need to wipe more out. Come here. And when I'm doing this with my flats coming into my angles, I'm making sure it's clean. I'm not leaving a bunch of excess mud. My tape is lied down nicely. If I leave like a big bulge in there and then try and do my angle, it'll catch it, rip it, and then it'll cause problems later also with that tape not being super flat in there. So 
that's our flat. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. Just tape mud, make sure your mud is thin enough and you know, use an ample amount. Don't be afraid and get it in that bevel. And then also don't coat this until it's dry. It needs time to pull back. Taping muds are made to shrink. So it's going to take that and it's going to shrink it and it's going to pull it back in and down into that joint. And then that's where we get our strength. And that's how we get, you know, flats and butts that don't crack. So now we're going to go over and we're going to do our angle. I'm just going to do a little angle here, kind of on a little pony wall, just to give you an example of how this works. It's going to be really similar. Uh, we are going to use paper tape. Do not use mesh tape and angles and don't use fiber fuse. It will rip and tear and then you'll have major issues with your angles later. And then also mesh tape is just not meant for angles, period. Paper tape only. So we'll go through how to do this real quickly. So you have a good idea of how to do some simple hand taping on your own. So let's go ahead and get into our angle. This is where the crease is always important, but this is where it really helps you when you're getting into angles. The creased side is going to go against and inside the angle. So as you can tell, this is nice and it's pre-folded, so it's going to fit nicely in there. So I have my tape. I already measured it out just to save time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. You can use a six, five, four, three, whatever you want. I'm just going to be using a six because it's what I have. I'm going to load this angle up with mud. And I'm not using my whole six. I'm just using the side of my six and doing a striping action. So that way I'm not putting a ton of mud in there. Next, I'm going to take my paper tape and then I'm going to fold it. Get it all nice and creased. And then set it in the angle. It's a touch long. You don't want to have it draping all over the floor because the trim guys will get mad, so don't do that. I'm going to have it about right there. And you can like slide this and move this a little bit. And there's a lot of angle tools too that you can use also to help you with angles, getting them super crisp and kind of speeding up the process. So next thing I'm going to do, just kind of gently push it in there, make sure it's nice. And then I'm going to wipe. And when I'm doing this, I want to get into the angle. So I'm taking my knife and I'm pushing into the angle to make sure it's not getting rounded out. So when you run into problems with angles not being crisp, what can happen is you can actually not be getting all the way into that angle. You kind of like leave too much mud in the crease and in the center, and then that can cause rounded angles later. So it's really important you get in there, you get your tape really flat, you get all the way into the angle and you get your angle tape really crisp. And then that's it. That's how we hand tape an angle. If you have a three way, you just kind of come in and lay the tape on top of each other. And then this would go over a flat. So that flat we just did, this angle tape would go over that cut edge, enveloping and sealing everything. Again, don't coat it until it's dry. It needs time to shrink back. Anyway, that's it for this week's episode. Kind of this crash course and hand taping. Of course, we'll get into more of it later. I'm always here to answer questions. And of course, check out all of the contributors on the Build Show Network. Huge cast of awesome people. Um, check me out on socials. I'm Drywall Shorty on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. And I'll check you guys next week.